Okay, this is a topic that is commonly misunderstood, so I want to go over it, show the difference between permutations and combinations. They are very similar in the way that we are choosing uh, to arrange a certain number of items or to pick a certain number of items from a total number. And we'll get to an example after this. But the difference between permutations and combinations is really stated very simply if we just say permutations are where order matters. And combinations is where order does not matter. And what I mean by that is we are always going to be given a group of items or people and we are asked how many ways can we choose a certain number of those people from the total amount. Um, that question right there is for combinations because we're just choosing the number of people or the number of things. So let me give you an example. Let's say we start with the letter A, B, C, and D, these four letters. And the question is, you need to choose two of the letters from the group of four. That's it. We just, how many ways can you choose a combination of two? Well, let's write them out. We could write, we could choose A and B. We could choose B and C, we could choose C and D, we could choose A and D, we could choose B and D. Uh, are we missing any others? No, we're not. Right, so these are, these are all of the different combinations that uh, we could choose. Sorry, we're missing one more. We could choose A and C. A and C. So those are the six different pairs, right? Uh, so what that is, that's going to be combinations because the order doesn't matter. Notice I did not write, well, we could also choose B, A. In other words, the reverse of this one. And we could also choose C, B, the reverse of this one. That These are not counted as separate ones versus in the permutations, they would be because order matters. So we're counting BA as a, as a separate combination or a separate arrangement of AB, but down here we are not. That's the difference between permutations and combinations, order mattering. So because of that, we're, when we're counting these extra ones, these extra arrangements and permutations, permutations are always going to be higher than combinations. So if we have a group of 10 things and we're choosing five of them, uh, the combinations will be a lot less than the permutations because we're not double counting so many of those things. Let's go to the formula. NPR, so from N items we're choosing R items. That always equals N factorial over N minus R factorial. For uh, combinations, it's NCR, so you're just choosing. That's how I remember which one is which, is combinations you're just choosing. The people, you're not arranging them afterwards. Uh, this is n factorial over n minus r factorial, so that part's the exact same as the p, except for we're also going to say r factorial on the bottom. Okay, so there's your two formulas. Remember, if you're arranging the items after you choose them, we, cho we use the uh, npr formula. If you are simply just choosing the item, choosing we use combinations, so choosing and arranging after choosing. I think that's a nice way of remembering them as well. Let's do a quick example. A committee of three people needs to be chosen from a group of 11. How many ways can this committee be chosen? Super simple, uh, we're just choosing three people from a group of 11, so it's 11C3. We're not arranging them after that. So that is 11 factorial over 11 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. Now we can probably actually simplify most of this in our head here. This is 11 times 10 times 9 times 8, 7, 6. We'd go all the way, so I'm going to stop here at 8 factorial because I know on the bottom 11 minus 3, that is 8 factorial times 3 factorial. So I can then cancel the 8 factorials I can do 9 over, so I'm going to choose 3 factorial to change that to 3, 2, 1. So 9 over 3 is 3. 
I can do 10 over 2 is 5, so I end up with 11 times 5 times 3 all over 1. And that equals 15 times 11. Well, 15 times 10 is 150, plus another 15 is 165. So there's 165 ways we can choose a group of 3 from a group of 11. Now what about question 2? How many ways can the committee be formed if you need to choose a president, vice president, and secretary? So there's a perfect example. Back, you know, let's say we're choosing somebody whose name starts with A, B, and C. These three people are who we've chosen. Well, now we're arranging them once we've chosen them into the different positions. So we have to choose, we have to count A, B, C as a separate arrangement from A, C, B, and a separate arrangement from B, C, A, and a separate arrangement from B, A, C, and separate from C, A, B, etc. So in other words, we're choosing them, so we're using this C formula, and then we're arranging them, which ends up canceling and making it an NPR situation. So we're doing this 11P3 ways, and this equals 11 factorial over 8 factorial. which you can just put in the calculator, is 108,900 ways. That clearly seems too high, which it is. That's the problem with calculator errors. Sometimes the factorial is not the easiest thing to punch in. This is going to end up just being 11 times 10 times 9, because the 8 factorials will once again cancel. And that is just 990 ways. Always good to check your calculator errors. The, the answer seemed too high, and it was. So 990 ways. As we know, that's a nice little check because we know it's much higher than just the uh, combinations. We always know that um, the NPR is going to be much higher than NCR because you're arranging them afterwards. So that's a quick example of... Uh, the difference between permutations and combinations. For permutations, order matters. For combinations, it does not.